Welcome to the Success in Medicine podcast. I'm Dr. Rajani Kata, author of The Successful Match, and I'm here with my partner and co-author, Dr. Samir Desai. And on today's episode, we wanted to talk about the Medical Student Performance Evaluation, or the MSPE, formerly known as the Dean's Letter. And Samir, I thought this was a really good topic to talk about for several reasons, Um, but one of the main ones is that I think a lot of students don't recognize how important the MSPE is when you're applying for residency. Can you talk about the importance of this factor in the residency match process? Absolutely, Regine. So the MSPE is an incredibly important part of the residency selection process. So in the last NRMP survey of program directors, this was a survey of over 1,200 residency program directors representing 24 different specialties. The MSPE was ranked as the third most important criteria that program directors use to make interview decisions. And when you say third most important criteria, does that hold Uh, across multiple specialties? What did you see there? Yeah, so there are going to be some individual differences from specialty to specialty, but what you will see is that it's consistently rated as one of the top criteria used by programs in the interview decision-making process. And getting back to one of the other points you mentioned, Rajani, This is something that's underappreciated, and I find that a lot of students are simply not aware of the role the MSPE has in this process and are also unaware that they have quite a bit to do with how this final document looks for their residency application. I'm glad you brought up that point because I absolutely agree. I think a lot of students, whether you're a first year or a second year or a third year student, you don't necessarily realize exactly what goes into producing the MSPE and how much of a role that you can play. So why don't we talk about the background of how this document is produced? Yes, that's a great point, Rajani. So what is this document? That's, let's start there. So the MSPE was previously known as the Dean's Letter. It is now known as the MSPE, which stands for the Medical Student Performance Evaluation. And this is a letter of evaluation. It is not a letter of recommendation. So basically what the school is going to do when it produces your MSPE is take into account all of the different things you've been doing from day one of med school all the way to your fourth year of med school when you are about to apply for residency. So it's going to take into consideration your preclinical performance, your clinical performance, and make sure that that is available in this document for residency programs to understand. So that covers a lot of your medical school re- medical school career. Can we talk a little bit more about how a dean actually sits down to write this document? Yes. So generally what happens is you're going to receive some notification in the winter to spring of your third year. And that communication is going to tell you that it's going to be time to schedule an appointment with the dean or his or her designee to discuss the MSPE. Now, quite often this is a one-on-one appointment where they talk to you about this document and they may ask in advance of this appointment for you to submit some important materials. Among those materials might be your CV, your personal statement, and some other supporting information that will help them to draft this document. And so what happens after you have that initial meeting? Let's say it's in the spring of your third year. What happens after that initial meeting? So after that initial meeting, the dean or his or her designee will sit down to develop this draft. And 
the process varies from school to school, but it will often involve you having a chance to take a look at the draft. Some schools might allow you to review the draft on two occasions. Other schools might only allow you to do it once, but that's going to be your only opportunity to read it over, uh, to make any changes that are generally kept to what would they call factual changes. And that's going to be an important time for you just to make sure that it accurately reflects the things that you've done. And so if you have this opportunity to review the draft, and let's say there's nothing uh, that's factually incorrect, what then happens? If there's nothing that's factually incorrect, then the dean will go ahead and complete the process, finalize the draft, and then it will be made available to residency programs. There's a uniform release date for the MSPE, which is October 1st, meaning no residency program can receive this document until October 1st. And at that point, when they receive it, they are free to use it in making their interview decisions. So there's a few other aspects uh, that I really want to delve a little bit deeper in, but I'd like to start with, I know a common misconception that you and I have seen from our medical students, which is that the dean's letter or the MSPE is sort of produced separately from the student. You know, it just reflects, um, you know, sort of what's uh, your grades and maybe some narrative comments. But one point that I really want to emphasize and I'd like you to discuss this, is that a student does have some input into the content of the MSPE. Um, and there are several ways that that can be addressed. So can you go into that a little bit more? Yes. So there are six sections of the MSPE, and students have the opportunity to influence the content of several of these sections. The first section I would bring to your attention, Rajani, is what is called noteworthy characteristics. Now, this is something that residency programs will see on page one of the MSPE document. So it's going to be something that helps them form a first impression of you as an applicant. And what these noteworthy characteristics are, are essentially three bullet points. And these bullet points are not very long. They're usually one to two sentences in length, and many schools will have a character limit, but they are bullet points where you are able to highlight certain attributes or contributions that you believe residency programs would find favorable. Can you give us some examples of what might be noteworthy characteristics? Absolutely. So let us say that you uh, have been involved in leadership. Perhaps you founded an organization and maybe you've decided that you would like to highlight that leadership role and your leadership involvement. And you've decided to do that because when you research your specialty, you notice that leadership qualities were identified by program directors as a very important residency selection criteria. So having made that determination, you might go, you might say to yourself, okay, one of my three bullet points is going to be about me establishing this new organization and what you accomplished in doing that, and that would kind of convey that you have this background in leadership. So this is information that you really need to be thinking about before you have that initial meeting with the dean's designee. Absolutely, because these are bullet points that can be taken from different points of your medical school education. And in some cases, they, they may even be things that you have did before medical school. And the key question you have to ask yourself is, what are these things that I have done? And how would it be viewed by a program director in the specialty that I'm applying to? And if you can do that, then you might come up with a list of different noteworthy characteristics. And it's okay when you're first doing this to have a longer list, but that's something then that you can discuss with your specialty specific advisor to come up with the three best that present you in the best light. So that's a great example of what 
a medical student needs to be thinking about in advance of their first meeting. Let's also talk about clerkship evaluations, because you and I had discussed how important it is for students to keep up with this. Can you elaborate on that point? So, Rajini, as students are rotating through their core clerkships, they are going to be doing a lot of different things. And their evaluators, whether they're attendings or residents, will be taking note of all these things that the students are doing. And at the end of the clerkship, these evaluators will be asked to place comments on the evaluation form. And those comments are often placed, sometimes verbatim, into your MSPE. And these are placed in the narrative section of your MSPE. And that's a very important area for residency programs. So tell us a little bit more about these narrative comments. So these narrative comments may be placed in one of two description fields on your evaluation form. So schools are increasingly dividing these comments into what we call formative comments and summative comments. So formative comments are those comments that are meant for you to build upon. So as students, we're trying to grow through every experience that you have. And so your evaluators are going to be telling you about areas that you may need to work on or improve. And those are formative comments. Those are not meant to be placed in your MSPE. Those need to be contrasted from what we call summative comments. And those are comments that schools will often take from your MSPE and place directly into the narrative comments on your MSPE. And you said sometimes um, this can get Sometimes a comment might be put into the wrong field. What can you as a student do if that happens? Yes, so there, there's a couple of reasons why comments can be put into the wrong field. So one reason might be that the attending mistakenly puts a formative comment into the summative comments section. Another reason why this could be could happen is if the evaluation form doesn't have two separate fields, one for formative comments, one for summative comments. And so if a student is reading the evaluation comments and they feel that a formative comment is going to be in their MSPE, then what the student can do is they can talk to the evaluator or they can talk to their clerkship director. It really depends on the policy at their school about that particular comment to see if they would be willing to remove that from the summative section and remove it from entering your MSPE. Can you, just to give some context, can you give an example of a formative comment that would be viewed negatively by a program director? Absolutely. So uh, let's say that a student is, is working on his ability to generate differential diagnoses. And, and let's say that he's making progress in this area, but maybe he's struggling to create what we call a prioritized differential, meaning putting at the top of his list of differential the conditions that he thinks is most likely to account for that patient's clinical presentation. So an example of a formative comment there might be Jason uh, was noted to have difficulty at the beginning of his clerkship creating or offering a prioritized differential diagnosis, but this was noted to become easier for him as the rotation progressed. Now, that's something that we would expect a lot of students to need to work on because that's just a natural stage in their learning process, and that might be something that I would want that student to continue to focus on on his next, say, internal medicine rotation. But that might not be something that I would want in his MSPE. And so these are the sort of comments that students should be looking out for and really paying attention, um, paying attention to if they see those. That's right, because, you know, including that in your MSPE, even though that's something that 
most students would need to work on might suggest to the reader of the MSPE that this was something he was very deficient in. And that's and that's something where if you recognize that as perhaps being a concerning comment, you need to follow your school's policy. And as you said, um, that really depends on the individual school, whether that's something that you discuss with the evaluator or perhaps the clerkship director. But I want to emphasize one point that you and I had talked about, which is that school's policies really vary a lot and you have to pay close attention to the time limit. Can you talk about that? Yes, every school has their own policy and many schools will have a time limit, meaning you have four weeks from receipt of your evaluation to meet with the decision maker and talk about that particular comment. Or maybe you have two months or three months to do it. But knowing early how much time you have at your school is going to allow you to plan properly. And I do meet a lot of students who aren't aware of these policies. And once they become uh, cognizant of how important these comments are, then when they do go back to their evaluator or their clerkship director, they find that that time limit has uh, expired. And I think there's a corollary to this point also, which is that it is important to, I think students need to be able to predict a little bit what will be um, in their clerkship evaluation before they get to the end of the clerkship, meaning it's really important to seek frequent feedback. Uh, And this is something you have written about, um, the importance of seeking feedback. Can you comment on that in this uh, in this respect here? Yes, Rajani. So it's so important that, you know, I devoted a full chapter on feedback and evaluations in our book, uh, Success on the Wards. And, you know, one of the best ways to protect yourself from concerning comments in your MSPE is to perform to the highest level that you can in your clinical work. But it's a there's a danger in just using yourself to determine if you're achieving that. And this is where feedback is so crucial to the process. And, you know, I know a lot of attendings and I know that they're so interested in f- nurturing the growth of their students and they know that feedback is important. But in day-to-day work, sometimes things get busy and the time that attendings have set aside to meet with their students, uh, that may become difficult for them. So it's important that students also become proactive with this. And, you know, it's great to get mid-rotation feedback. It's important to do that, but it's important also to get feedback along the way as you are demonstrating your abilities in different areas. So for example, as you make an oral case presentation on a newly admitted patient, right after that is a great time to get some feedback from your attending. And and hearing that their thoughts will tell you what you're doing, how you're doing, and will give you some idea if you need to really work on an area so that it doesn't become a problem for your evaluation and for your MSPE. Such an important point. Well, let me conclude by asking a little bit more about other sections of the MSPE. Uh, Can you comment on those? I know we had talked about academic history, statement of professionalism, and class rank. Can you um, comment on how those sections are created? So the section on academic history is also very, very important. It appears early in the MSPE document. And this is where, if you've had any difficulty in medical school, you know, perhaps there was a preclinical course where you struggled. Uh, Maybe there was a clerkship where you had some difficulty, a shelf exam uh, where you didn't perform up to your usual level. This is where your school might indicate that. And knowing that that's there, is going to be a big part of creating a strategy to help you overcome that, because that is going to be something that residency programs are going to be concerned with. So I would tell students to pay close attention to your academic history. And even before you see your MSP draft, 
if you know that these things have happened to you, you want to talk to your dean about how they're going to be addressed in the MSBE. That's going to be a big part of your strategy. And also with respect to class rank, that's something that's very important to residency programs. And that's something that generally appears in the final paragraph of your MSPE. Now, what students should realize is not all schools have a class rank system, but when schools do, they may, they may be very clear. They might say this student was number 32 out of a class of 202 students, or they may say this student was in this quartile or this quintile. But a lot of schools don't come right out and say that they might use what we call a descriptor or a final paragraph adjective and sometimes uh, that descriptor is is a code word that conveys to residency programs what your class rank is isn't it interesting when you hear medical student performance evaluation or the old term dean's letter it, it really just sounds like it's such a simple document, you know, a, a dean's letter summarizing your medical school performance. But it's really quite complex, isn't it, Samir? It is, and that's a great point. There are, there are layers of complexity here. Uh, it's obviously a document that is being produced relatively late in your medical school years, but it is being produced from performance that is occurring from day one of school. Thank you, Samir, for going into such detail about this aspect of the application. For our listeners, I'm going to direct you back to our website, thesuccessfulmatch.com, where we have more information about this topic as well as related ones. Thank you. Thank you.